Welcome to Eco Me and Eco You, episode 13. That sounded good. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> so, because the last two episodes, so the one that I listened to this morning, episode 12, was exactly the same with the two mics, and then episode 11 was with two mics as well. But yeah. it was only episode 12 that had the funny feedback. Yeah. Interesting. I think I think it was because I just made some adjustments, fiddled with the knobs between and uh, between the sessions. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. And <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so, sitting here cracking up laughing. But anyway, and I think I tried to compensate, but I'm like, really, I don't need to because we're on two separate mics anyway mm. that were quite loud anyway. So I don't think it mm. matters too much that I'm a little bit. I'm a lower docile tone to what you are. Are you saying that I have a high pitched voice? <laughs> I'm saying that I have a nice deep salt voice. <laughs> and I'm more cackly. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. I'm down with that. <laughs> um hi guys, welcome back yeah. to Eco Me and Eco You podcast. Yeah. Hey guys. Where two friends get together and just tap chat a bunch of stuff about sustainable living. Yeah. Usually cover a subject maybe do some product testing yeah we haven't done that for a while we haven't done that for a while but we have one coming up we have though, one coming up soon. yeah and oh so i believe that we start this episode with how has your week been how sustainable has your week or month been it should be my month has been reasonably sustainable i'm trying to think about what i've done or what i haven't done <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Now I'm like drawing a blank. It's funny though, because I think like you kind of get into a, you get into a routine and things that you do like just become so normal that you don't think it's a big deal. Yeah. And then you kind of get comfortable and you don't introduce anything new because you're, you know, you're comfortable where you are and then you mm. kind of forget. Yeah. I've been doing, been using my coffee cup. Mm-hmm. So that's been going good. Same old with that. Uh, Matt and I have just been trying to be more conscious of the products we're buying at the supermarket. Yep. Matt's been actually pretty good at that. He's wow. Been, he's, I hate to say this month, he's been better at me at it than I have. Does he guilt you and be like, no, like this wrapped in plastic? He's like, he's like, well, why don't we get this one? And he's like, because it doesn't have, it's not wrapped in plastic. Why don't we get that? I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> So that's good. We're helping. We're that's good. You help each other growing out. Growing together, yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's good. But other than that, not much. I want to cut down on my... I've been really into, like, chocolate and, mm. like, chocolate bars. And that means, of course, having plastic with that. So I need to... Ye- some chocolate has plastic. Mm. Um, There are some chocolate options that do not have plastic. But then you might run into other issues, like palm oil mm. um, actually that's a really good thing I'm going to talk about in a little bit yeah. um, you can also bulk buy chocolate that's true that's what I need to look at yeah. I was thinking about getting some bulk bags from you sometime because I've started <laughs> this little hand yeah. movement going on to bulk bag <laughs> uh, because I'm starting to make the rats their own mix to oh, go cool. with their other stuff they have mm-hmm so it means that I'll be going to like the bulk food stores more Been often. In. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can also buy compostable packaging chocolate. So Fair Trade Aid does compostable packaging, but I think it's only commercially compostable. So, mm. but you could t- dump them at work. Yeah, it's true. I could take them to work and compost mm. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's good chocolate. It's Trade good. Aid is a good chocolate. I'm gonna have to try it. Yeah. What about you? How's your week slash month been? Well, it's been a very interesting month. Yeah. Probably slacker than usual. So we just moved into our house. Mm. Um which involved a lot of culling of things. Yeah. Like I have this really bad tendency of kind of hoarding things because I don't want to throw something out. Yeah. It, it like might be stupid little things like something broken or whatever. I'm like, uh, mm. I should deal with something, deal with it later. Yeah. And then you don't end up dealing with it later and there's probably a lot of things that just ended up in the rubbish like more rubbish than we produce normally yeah right just tidying up things 
I did what I could with recycling. Um, the cool thing was is that we actually use like no new products That's good. to ship our house. So we did buy five large boxes for like all our clothes and bedding because they're, they're quite big boxes. Yeah. Like, you know, half the height of me. Yeah. Um, but we had enough in our garage from when we moved from when we moved to London and then moving back to London. Mm. So all our stuff that was in storage then. And when we bought the big boxes, we also raided the Bunnings free boxes. Oh, yeah. So we spent like 15 minutes like picking up all the good boxes and breaking them down and packing them all up. <laughs> um, I used all my smart ass TP toilet paper coverings oh, yeah. to wrap everything up. Oh, that's a good to idea. To protect them. And I also had a whole lot of, like, bubble wrap and some polystyrene, like, foamy stuff that I just kept for moments like these when you move again and you mm. need to wrap it all up. Rather than getting rid of it, I might as well keep it and use it at a later date. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Nice. I didn't use my paper tape. I use normal, traditional sellotape. Mm. Because that, my friend, is... I'm sorry, but it was way too much effort. Yeah. If you've seen a YouTube, uh, Instagram story of me taping boxes up with my paper tape. No, is that that you have to like wet it first? Eh? Yeah, so yeah. it's a vegetable, vegetable gum on one side, paper on the other side, and you have to, it's water activated, so I have to get a damp cloth and wipe the back of the tape, which is fine when you do like a few orders a week, but yeah. if you're packing like your whole entire house up, it's yeah not ideal. Plus, I was a little bit nervous at how it might hold up. Mm. Yeah, worrying, especially... Yeah. If you're bringing other people moving your stuff. Yeah, we had movers do it this time. So, yeah. Yeah. But out of this, I want to set up a new recycling system at home. Mm. So you've got your normal recycling that you put out weekly. But I want to yeah. do, like, your stuff that you wouldn't typically recycle regularly. So have a bin for, like, say, scrap fabrics mm. or yarns and stuff. Have one for, like, tin that you don't put in your normal recycling bin. Yeah. And I don't know whatever else, like electronic waste, like yeah. have little bins for all of those things. So it's really easy for me to evenly divvy it up at the mm. time. Because I think this is the thing people's like, oh, I should really do something with the scrap fabric and be like, oh, I can't be bothered and just throw it in the bin. Yeah. Because there's nothing immediately easy to, mm. deal, to do with it. Yeah. So I'm going to try that system and see if that works. And so then like maybe in a year's time when the fabric bin is full, I'll take it somewhere that recycles fabric. Oh, yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah. I just, I'm just like peering at you over the cupboard. <laughs> it's a bit random. <laughs> it feels a bit weird. So, our episode 12 had a bit of some funny feedback on oh, the yeah. mic. So, I'm sitting here with a cardboard box basically yeah. around my mic and I'm peering over it looking at <laughs> Nick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it was more my bad than it getting feedback. But I noticed even when we had two mics, the other, especially your mic would pick me up. Ah, uh, yeah. I think because it picks up sound a bit different from this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're different mics. That's right. We're we're learning along exactly. the way. This is all part of the learning experience in all ways, and yeah. we're really enjoying doing this. So sorry we had bad audio one week, but I don't yeah. care at the same time because <laughs> <laughs> it's know. about the content, not what it sounds like. Like you can still saying, hear us fine. I'm like, oh, t- like 12 in and this is the first thing. I'm like, it's pretty good. <laughs> Honestly, like kudos to Nick. So she does all the recording and editing. And <laughs> Thank you. You're amazing. Oh, it's okay. You're amazing too. You do all the blurbs. I wouldn't be able to do that. And finding the good photos. <laughs> you would be able to find good photos though. Yeah, but I also feel like on top of my other stuff, like finding photos for the podcast would be like in the lower region of my <laughs> yeah, priority list. It'll break you. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. This is a team. Yeah, team effort. Team job. So, yeah. yeah. I'm glad to do my bit. Yeah. I just winked at you. That was yeah, creepy. No, Sorry. Was creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, we'll just go back a little bit. Yeah. Um, when we talked about palm oil and chocolate. Oh, yes. So I think this is quite an interesting point to talk about. And I imagine there's quite a few different views on this, but 
we will share this. Um, right, so ahead. palm oil, as you know, is mainly grown in like Indonesia and Malaysia. Yeah. And Borneo, where all the orangutans are. Mm. And it's actually done really unsustainably. And there's a lot of um, res- responsible for a lot of deforestation yeah. and basically the decline of the orangutan population. Mm. Um, so a lot of people boycott palm oil products, which I don't disagree with. I try not to use palm oil products where I can. Yeah. Um, in New Zealand and Australia, you actually don't need to state very clearly that it's palm oil. Mm. It can be any type of vegetable oil. Like there's nothing, no rules in place for you to label it correctly. Yeah. In the UK, you have to state that it's palm oil. Oh, really? There's no such thing as vegetable oil. It yeah. has to be exactly what it, what is, it is, which yeah. I think is fair. And I know that there was something a little while ago, maybe two years ago now, where it was trying to get passed through government, and I haven't heard anything since. Mm. So I'm guessing it just kind of got squashed. Um, so the other day I did a post about how I had brought, my, did my bulk shop of Eco Store products, which oh, I've yeah. been doing for years. Mm. Um, and because I have large containers, I maybe do it once a year or something. And someone pointed out to me that Eco Store used palm oil in their products. And I was oh. like, what the fuck? I did not know this. And I was like, I just spent all this money and bought so much liquid and it's all got palm oil in it. And I freaked out. Mm. So I did some research and they only use um, certified sustainable palm oil. All right. Um, and they're extremely transparent about their efforts and trying to make sure that what they use is sustainable as possible. Mm. Um, Simon and I have also been to Malaysia. Yeah. Um, we went there for our honeymoon to see the orangutans because that's something that was really important to us to see because they're incredible species mm. to observe and they're quite fascinating. Like, yeah. you know, they take up so much space. They need a lot of space to live and they mm. plant, they grow, they grow, they make a new nest like every night oh, wow. to sleep. They never sleep in the same nest. Mm. Um, and they're solitary animals so there's only one of them so you can imagine how much space these animals Mm. need to live and with the palm oil industry what they end up doing is they block them off so they're trapped oh and like that one in that one area that's sad yeah it's really sad but if they can manage that through more sustainable practices and do what they can to have it because they burn a lot of forestation to get rid of Mm. it for palm oil trees so if they can do it all cleanly and i know there's a lot of people trying to make it more sustainable um i feel like that's a really important thing to kind of support yeah um but also like the people in malaysia that's their livelihood Mm. that's how they make their money that's how they make a living like the people that that will affect the most by boycotting palm oil is the poorest part yeah of malaysia because they're the people that do all the work and that's they use all the palm oil products mm. for their home and they that's how they make a living. Yeah. So as much as it's not a good product, if somebody's trying to make it a more sustainable industry, like I'm gonna support that. Yeah. I think I think that's true in a lot of industries that are trying to be more sustainable. Mm. That you should kind of back especially if they're kind of going out of their way to do it. Mm. I think it's definitely something you should Especially if they're very transparent about mm, it. Like, exactly. they've got the full story on their website. Like, you can go and read about it. And I've also heard, had a friend actually contact me and ask me about it because she was like, she read an article that talked about if you stop using palm oil, the next oil that you use is going to have like a far worse environmental impact. Yeah. So, you've always got to weigh things up at mm. the same time. Like, it's quite hard to be able to do everything. Yeah. Equally, choose your values and. If you can support the businesses that are doing it in a sustainable way, yeah. So exactly, I just wanted to talk about that because I think that's quite. It was quite interesting. Important. I didn't know that. Well, I didn't know about like the eco store story. I knew about the mm. whole palm oil thing mm. because Matt's sister, uh, she did. A s- oh, she was at uni and she studied orangutans and primates oh, wow. and stuff. So yeah. She got real big into the mm. palm oil thing mm. and making sure not to buy products that had palm oil yeah. in it. Because that was one of her core values. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's fair. And I will like, I, I honestly buy palm oil-free products where I can. Oh, yeah. Me too. 
And it is very hard in New Zealand to not buy products that have got palm oil because especially don't when they just say label it. Yeah. that it just has vegetable oil mm. in it. Yeah. Yeah. So the lint chocolate uses palm oil, mm. and that's cardboard and tin foil. Uh, so there's no plastic packaging. Yeah, and it's recyclable, but it's sustainable again. Sustainable, certified sustainable. What about palm the oil. Whitaker's chocolate? They have that uh, artisanal. Yeah, that would be the same. I think the paper, the tin foil oh, inside it might have that. Pa- I think I it's think that it's waxy a, paper. That waxy thing. paper. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, that's right. Mm. I just have to research and slash stop snacking on sugar so much. <laughs> fruit. Yeah, fruit. I've started getting bananas. I have a banana drawer now. I hate bananas, but they're so good because they're like package free. I know. They're package three and I feel like they just kind of like fill you up in a way. They're that, really good. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I actually mm. have some bananas at home. I buy like four. Uh, I always find the bananas that look lonely. <laughs> <laughs> and I buy all the lonely bananas. Oh, that's so nice. Put them all together. You go, oh, you're together now. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Shall we talk <laughs> 17 minutes later? Yeah. Um, We'll talk about what we want to talk about, shall we? Yeah. So this episode, which might become more of a regular thing, maybe like once a month or every couple of months. Oh, so it every will be four every episodes. Time, every four episodes, we were thinking of doing basically this episode where we find articles and stuff and news that's been happening that kind of centers around sustainability and zero waste and kind of talking about them. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's a cool, cool idea. I think so too. So, how do you want to do this? Do you want to do like, do you we... do one story, I do one story, you do one story, yeah. I do one story? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so for me the biggest thing that's kind of happened in the news recently like this isn't just like the other day like it kind of happened towards the end of last year so it's yeah. a couple months old but it's so huge that i think we really should talk about it <laughs> um she's using her hands so you know she's passionate oh uh, yeah <laughs> um i don't know how to talk in the mic and look at my laptop at the same time oh am i doing okay yeah no you're doing Testing, right. one two three four. <laughs> um cool so eu has banned single-use plastics. Which is awesome. Which is fucking amazing. Yeah. So by 2021, they want to ban things like straws, plates, cups, and cotton buds. Mm. All the things that... So they've done it by looking at what showed up on the beaches. Yeah. Oh, and wow. And decided that's, cool. that's what needs to go. Mm. Yeah. Um, the thing that blew me away so much by this... I feel like I need to hold the mic. Nope. Um, so Parliament voted, was backed by 571 people to saying yes to 53 mm. people saying no. Yeah, that's awesome. That's like amazing. So amazing. Mm. It just shows you that the more that we demand this from people, the yeah. more results we're going to get. And we just need to keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. Like... This just blows my mind. 2021. That's like in three years. Yeah. No single plastics in all of Europe. Yeah. That's. Or the EU. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at a glance. So that's all by, you know, 2021. Yeah. Um, they kind of want to look at food packaging next. Um, they want to reduce food. They want to cut down 25% by 2025. Yeah. Beverage bottles will also be required to be, will be required to be collected and recycled at a rate of 90% by 2025. Wow. Awesome. Um, cigarette butts, remarkably resilient components of plastic pollution. Yeah. Will be reduced by 50% by 2025 and 80% by 2030. Awesome. That's cool really cool that's so cool i know about the cigarette butt things when we did that Mm. beach clean i was really surprised about how many cigarette butts i picked up it's crazy yeah yeah it was ridiculous it's quite an interesting one though because everyone knows smoking causes cancer yeah it makes you sick it's so Mm. bad for you so it's really hard i think to tell someone to not put their cigarette butt in the environment mm. when they're killing themselves anyway like yeah. 
it's quite a weird barrier I feel to like I feel like that would be something that will not really be able to change unless you ban smoking unless you ban smoking but uh you know how we changed our smoking laws Mm -hmm. so you can smoke in a public place Mm -hmm. I think in New Zealand it kind of and they did a lot of very good marketing strategies which made smoking not cool anymore yep and like I mean really you don't see too many people smoking out and about it's now. very rare yeah which is very yeah. rare rather I didn't realize this fact until we went to Canada and it was like smoking was still cool and we're like what's going on and I'm like it's even colder in Canada why are why are you outside smoking, smoking in the snow <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, so it was weird to see. It's like, oh, obviously something happened where that message was just getting out and people just connected with it. Mm. And so we, it kind of shifted down. So maybe that's something people need to look at and just like not educating, but having a message that. Yeah. Being like, oh, don't put your cigarette butt on the ground. It's bad yeah, yeah. for the environment. Yeah, yeah. Put in your yourself, health. But not the environment. Not the yeah, environment. yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. Um. So that's like, I guess that's the main thing for me was, that was just huge. Like the EU research on the topic says that about 150,000 tons of plastic are tossed into the European waters every year. Far out. Like we have a serious problem with plastic. we do. And I'm glad it's getting addressed now. It's a bit late. It is a bit late. It's still being addressed. Yeah, Yeah, I agree. And... Like this, so it totally kind of leads into the next section, which is quite good. So, um, there's this company called Loop, which mm. is um like a packaging company that is zero waste, effectively, and they're closing the loop, the loop on, on plastic, plastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, on packaging. Yeah. Um. And it's like, oh, I got to look at my. I'm sorry, guys. I'm referring to my laptop notes. It's fine. Um. Du, 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 intro. Mm-hmm. Um. So, it's a joint attempt to phase out plastic packaging from the world's largest companies. So, people like Nestle, um, Unilever, Pepsi, Coca Cola, and stuff are joining the scheme, um, which is part of the global recycling from TerraCycle. So, have mm. you heard of TerraCycle? No. Um. I'll have to do some research on them and come back to you. Oh, yeah, okay. That's um, right. But they do, so, you know, if you use Colgate toothpa- toothpaste and toothbrushes, you can actually send it to TerraCycle and they'll recycle it. Oh, so yeah. So it's kind of like the recycling things that your local councils don't recycle. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um. So I know, like, the Biome stores in Australia have TerraCycle packages and you can do, like, pens and your toothbrushes and stuff. Yeah. It's quite cool. cool. Yeah. I mean, recycling That's still really cool. isn't the how do you, option. How but... do you send it to them? I don't know. I haven't done it yet. Oh, okay. I'm keeping mine in a jar. Oh. <laughs> oh and then I'll send it. But I think they, you just f- jump on their website, yeah. have a look, and they'll tell you where to send it. Or there are collection points around Auckland. Oh, yeah. Or cool. Around you. You'll find one around you somewhere. That's good to know. I didn't. That's something I didn't know. Oh, did you not read my thing about toothpaste? No. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> or I did. And, I'm and just you like, forgot about it. That's okay. That Lots forgotten. of information. Yeah. Um, so basically what these guys are doing is they will have reusable packaging, like mm. glass and like tins and stuff that you will buy your products online. So like your ice cream or yeah. your washing powder or liquid or whatever in a reusable container it'll mm. get delivered to your house you'll use it and then you just send it back and then it'll be oh, yeah. reused that's really cool yeah so they're going to be launching in paris new york new jersey and pennsylvania in the middle of may this year awesome they're planning on working out a delivery for london through tesco's later this year cool. um I can't find the article that I read a while ago, but if all goes well, like they're going to actually introduce it quite quickly. Mm. So it'll be like a trial period and then all Yeah, and then they'll out. roll it out a lot yeah. faster. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Like, 
It's amazing. Hallelujah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and this is the thing. Big companies and businesses that manufacture packaging need to be held accountable for yeah. the waste they're producing. And this is exactly what's happening. And mm. because governments have been like, nah, no more single-use plastics, yeah. it pushes the pressure back onto the manufacturers to deal with it. Yeah, especially because the customers are demanding mm-hmm. more clarity and more of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it's awesome. Because mm. it shows that, like, us talking about it and people actually saying enough is enough, something needs to change. Yeah. It's showing that corporates are actually... Yeah. Changing. They're changing. Which is amazing. Fucking incredible. Yeah. Like, it couldn't, it actually couldn't make me happier. Like, mm. we've seen so much change in the last little, like, even since we started yeah. this podcast. Yeah. Like, so, what's that change. six months ago? Yeah. Like, we've seen a huge change, a huge shift in how things are being done. Mm. And it just shows you people that your actions do make a difference. Yeah. Seven billion people making that change makes a difference. Yeah. Awesome. So never give up. No. Just keep fucking doing it. Yeah. Sorry, there's lots of swear words in this episode. I know. It's because I'm so passionate yeah. about it. You're so into it. <laughs> so into it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Big wins for the environment. Yeah, it is. Big wins for the environment. See, I feel like my news stories like, aren't as like all up there oh should we have done it the other way around oh no, sorry right. i did it we we're supposed to do you and then me yeah, and then no, you but and you me. were just on a roll so i was just I'm like sorry. i'll just let you go <laughs> i'm sorry no but, it's right no nick was telling me her stories at lunch and i actually like i didn't know these so i'm glad that you've found them i don't know how you found them but they're, oh. they're like about smaller people making a big difference yeah exactly smaller businesses and i think those small businesses make a huge difference. Yeah, so. I think so. Well, it's like like, like we're talking about, right? It's like you're making the change or small companies are mm-hmm. making the change. It's pressuring the bigger companies to make mm-hmm. the change yep. and governments and stuff. Yep. So it's yep. awesome. Yeah. But I'm going to interrupt you before you start talking yep. to wish Nick a very happy birthday. Oh, okay. So today's her birthday. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to sing to you because no, no one wants to hear don't. that. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to make a shout out to wish you a very happy birthday. Oh, thanks. I'm enjoying my birthday so far just been hanging out at home then we had a lovely lunch and now we're recording a podcast yeah so it's quite good very good it's like i'm glad you spend your birthday with me yeah and not your partner (laughs) (laughs) he's at he's at at work so it's okay yeah (laughs) so my stories i just have a couple of little stories uh the first one was about this primary school teacher in oh wait where is she from Sorry, team. I'm just scrolling back up the list. Her research. Yep. My research. Her amateur researcher. Yeah. <laughs> so she is from New Jersey. So what she decided to do was she was going to wear this grey button-up dress thing. I have a photo for you here. Oh, I'll find a better one. It's like this one. Oh, yeah, cute. It's like a little linen dress. Yeah, like a linen dress that she was going to wear for 100 days straight. So obviously she's going to clean it every day. And it was kind of... Don't you have to clean it every day? No. Well, I was, I'm just saying. Like, okay. Sorry. <laughs> she didn't wear it for 100 days straight without cleaning oh, it. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to get at. I'm sorry. Shut up, Crystal. Let her talk. Um, so she's a primary school teacher and she decided to do this challenge for herself, but then also for her students as well. So her whole kind of message or thing to point out to her kids and other people is that you don't need to wear a completely different outfit every day of the week it doesn't matter if you wear the same thing every day for a hundred days it's no one really cares apart from you yeah so it kind of illustrates that fast fashion isn't very necessary yeah that having like we've talked about before with our clothing stuff that having like quality garments that last you forever and that you can just rotate and you don't need to have a huge wardrobe yeah quality over quantity yeah yeah that it's achievable and she said that her students didn't really notice the first few days that's amazing and she's like and then i decided to say something and so she's gone through and she went through winter as well so she just had like coats and scarves and stuff layers, to wear. Yeah. But I just thought it was really cool because it's like a illustration of someone kind of going out of their way to illustrate an issue or like a solution. Yeah. 
I think that's so amazing and incredibly brave as well. Yeah. Because school kid kids can be mean. I know. Yeah. School kids and then also just people. People in general (laughs) are mean. Yes, I agree with that. And like, I'm just looking at the photos that Nick's scrolling through. Mm. It's how she wears them. So like she'll wear a belt with it or wear a scarf or some tights. Like, you know, it looks different all the time. She accessorizes with it. Yeah. She's... She has accessories with it, so it doesn't hmm. look like the same thing all the time. Hmm. I also sidestep, I think, that I really like the dress. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite a nice dress. It feels like it would be a very staple item in your wardrobe. Yeah. So that was quite good. It is cool. Uh, so that was that one. I went by that real fast. That's all right. That's okay. And then the other one I found was that... Onions and the onion industry in New Zealand. This is gonna be a bit random. It's so random, but it's such a good story. Um, have gotten basically a fund from the government to try, uh, grow their onions more sustainably. So uh, I think from here to twenty twenty, they're gonna be doing a bunch of research and kind of trying to understand how they can make their process of growing onions better for the environment more sustainable so whether that means they're talking about like taking the chemicals out so much and mm. just trying to be more ethical with their grow yeah that yeah. just blows my mind i know and like it seems like such a small thing like onions like who would have thought but, I know, but it makes such a big difference i mean we must eat quite a lot of onions in we New eat Zealand, and right? we also export a lot oh, do we onions yeah it's so random. Onions is such a funny word I know, as well. It's such a funny word. <laughs> That's cool. And they lead like it's just a great way to kind of like show you that businesses like can make a difference. Yeah, and I like and going like, out of their way to yeah. take initiative. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, and I've said it so many times is like if you have a business and you do not have a really good sustainable plan, you will not be here in the next 5 to 10 years. Yeah. End of story. You're I gone. That's very true. Especially yeah, from what we've seen from big companies like declaring that they're going to be making huge changes on the sustainability front Mm. is yeah i think it's almost something essential now that all companies need to have going forward yeah absolutely um speaking of that i just heard recently that yeah here we go nestle announces by 2020 they'll have sustainable packaging that's cool Oh, so that's like next year, isn't it? 2020, yeah. That's awesome. I think it's... Oh, they're in support of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Oh, that's nice. (laughs) Yeah, I think companies, even of like importers of goods, are looking... At ways of um, reducing their plastic that they use in packaging. And especially now that it's becoming more of a thing, I'm seeing mm. it a lot in packaging, uh, like sustainable packaging. Yeah. It's becoming more and more popular, so it means that there's more and more options out. So like no plastic, no yeah. polystyrene, yeah. like all recyclable, all recyclable all recycled packaging? Yeah, like having like a blend Yeah. even. Yeah. Because I think, because you do some electronic stuff, right? Yeah. So the packaging in the electronics is quite bad from my personal experience. There's always so much plastic in there. Yeah, so that's uh, just working in the company. That's one of the things that are trying to figure out ways of reducing plastic, whether that means that a product is instead of having like covered in that like blister packaging, which is just all plastic, mm is actually it being in like a color box which means it's like mostly cardboard and then maybe there's a little bit of plastic still in there but a lot less than what you would get normally yeah that's cool yeah like no it's good i try my best (laughs) i know but do you know what takes people like you sitting there doing the work being like no guys like we need to be making these changes and you pushing it and it gets through Mm. because the guy at the top's not thinking about the environment he's thinking about how much money they're going to be making yeah like we were talking the other day and someone's like oh i really like this pouch and i'm like oh but it's plastic like it's better how we're doing it at the moment because it's in cardboard so it can Mm. be recycled 
They're like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. I'm like, yep. <laughs> good work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's about it. Maybe we should have had more news stories. We should. We're almost. We're 36 minutes in. Yeah. Um, what else is stories? I'm just trying to think if I've heard stuff. We've talked about our beach clean, eh? No, we actually haven't. Oh. We did a that, beach clean. When cleaner. was that? Was that between now... Like our last podcast in now, eh? Yeah, must have. Oh, yeah. I think when we recorded our last one, it was like the literally day after. the yeah. next day, yeah, yeah, that we had the beach clean. Yeah, so I was celebrating 2,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah. Might be a small milestone, but for me, that's quite a huge thing. Mm. That means 2,000 people are thinking about the impacts of the environment. Yeah. Um, and rather than doing a giveaway like your traditional instagrammers would do yeah i decided to join forces with our friend steve from jam jar beach clean who mm-hmm. focuses on microplastics in the on the beaches yeah um and do a beach clean and nick joined us nick and her partner matt yeah what do you want to talk about i don't know how did it go i thought it was quite interesting I he's mean, full of knowledge like yeah, steve's amazing to listen to and what he's doing is incredible yeah i thought yeah, it was really good, and we were there for a couple of hours. We didn't find so many micro plastics. Well, like the little, what are they called? The little nodules? The noodles. Noodles. Nodules. I got that completely <laughs> wrong. Sorry, I was calling them noodles. noodles. And spelling them like noodles, <laughs> but it's noodles. Noodles. Like a noodle. Yeah, so they're like little... They're, they're the like raw plastic raw before plastic. it's turned into a product, so they're tiny little, like, plastic pellets. Mm. Yeah. Um, and there's different colours. So the clear ones are like the hard out raw material. And yeah. then I don't know if you found a couple of coloured ones. Oh, yeah, I found a couple of the them. The coloured ones are the colour that they mix with the clear ones to make coloured plastic. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we did that. We just walked along the beach mm. and picked up stuff. Yeah. It was quite good. What did you find most on the beach wow. other than cigarette butt? Uh, I found a couple of plastic straws, which I obviously was not happy with because it's the beach and then the sea's right there yeah (laughs) that's harder uh and what else just like bits of like wrappers yeah that obviously some of it had broken down or something or Uh, had torn off and just like the bit that you tear off to get into it yeah yeah i found a lot of those too yeah there was a lot of those bottle caps parts of bottle caps oh yeah and bottle caps as well it was just like a bunch of like stuff that Oh, yeah, and then that plate hit me as well. That was... That was... <laughs> was that like, was really ironic. I know. So I was, just, <laughs> I was just sitting there on the beach cleaning up and then this plastic plate proceeds to hit me. <laughs> it just, like, blew out of nowhere yeah. and smacked Nick in the side. Yeah. <laughs> she and was like, sitting down and yeah. just, like, smacked her. It's like, hello, I'm, like, I'm plastic. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come pick me up. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to pick it up and take it over the people that had it. I was like, excuse me, but I didn't. I know. But we picked it up, though. We picked it up. It couldn't fit in our jar, but no, we sorted it out. <laughs> I just thought, I'm like, this could not get any more. <laughs> you looked at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's some weird things, didn't you? I found like, like a leg, like a toy leg. Oh, Someone had found that. like a muscular toy leg, like Hercules leg or something. Mm. I found a um, like a fake plastic leaf, like a tree. Oh yes, actually, I found. I think I found one of those as well. Oh. Um, and Simon found like a battery pack. Oh, like I want to say from a lime scooter, but I don't think it was quite that big. But that kind of a, mm. like must have been from like maybe like a toy remote control car or something. Could have come off uh something from a boat as well. Yeah. Wash it up. Yeah. Yeah. What else did I find? It was a little while ago. It's just a bunch of rubbish. I found a pizza box dug into the sand. Yeah. I mean, it would have eventually degraded, but come on, people. <laughs> don't be so freaking lazy. It's, it's just it's actually bit... probably would have been better than going to landfill, right? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, take it home and bury it in your backyard. Yeah. 
<laughs> put on your compost at home. This is the thing. People are just lazy. Yeah. And That's exactly it. <sighs> when it's not at convenience of them, then to some people it becomes too hard. Yeah. I'm so disappointed in the human race. Yeah, but then it's been some good things too. We talked about some good things. We have to think about the positive. I know that. Well. I know that. And I, yeah, I have my moments when I'm like real sad and depressed. And yeah. then I'm like real happy because I'm seeing progress. Um, mm. In news, we could talk about one other thing if you wanted to. So I don't know if you saw this, but there is a 15 year old girl called Greta. Yeah. Who. What's she up to? Oh my gosh, she is amazing. Mm <laughs> hmm. So she did a talk at a conference in early December. Mm. You would have seen it all over the news. Um, she basically, oh, I wish I could find you the words exactly for what she said. Um, she said that, you know, you say that you love your children above all else. Mm. Yet you are taking the future from them, like you're stealing their future. Yeah. Like, for a 15-year-old girl, she said some pretty incredible, powerful mm. words. So I'll link, I'll put her name below. Yeah. So you guys can do some research around her. She's also called for a massive, like, school strike. Because mm. this is the thing, is that it's the generations below us, like our younger generation, that is going to suffer the most. Yeah. And we quite literally are robbing the future from them. Yeah. And... You know, people, our generation, like in the 30s, are being like, we know this now and mm. we're trying to make a huge difference. But yeah. it's the people that are older than us that are sitting in all the big seats making all the money mm. that are basically being like, nah, fuck it. I want money. Yeah. Fuck you all. But it's your grandchildren. Mm. Your grand, you're taking, you're stealing from your grandchildren. Yeah. Right. And she just, I saw something this morning as well that she was talking to Trump about. Anyway, she's incredible, and I think she's definitely one to watch, and she's going to make some big changes in, in the environment, climate mm. change industry, because we have 12 years. Yeah. And that actually terrifies the crap out of me, that in my lifetime, I'm going to, we're going to see, like, part extinction of the world. Mm. It's crazy. Heavy hearted, sorry, I just yeah. jumped into that. It's supposed to be positive and I just went <laughs> You went dark, then slightly I positive, dark. then dark again. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome though. It's good to see the younger generation as well being so mm. like proactive and mm. taking action. Mm -hmm. mm. Like even around other issues like feminism and yep. other things like them actually being like actually this isn't good enough and yeah. you might think that we're too young to have a say but we're gonna have a say and this is important to everyone kind of thing Well, because everything affects their future right yeah people that are older i won't say ages but you know people that are older that's allowed to vote mm. it's not going to affect them no so you gotta be thinking about yeah they i think children should have a Kids, younger generations should have a say and should yeah. have a vote in things because it's going so to affect well. them the most. Yeah. I mean, she's 15. She is damn smart for 15. Yeah. She's like. Real clever. It's, it's really inspiring mm. to see a younger generation taking charge like she is. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. And it's really motivating. Yeah. When you see people that young taking that action and you're like okay they're doing it like i can do it too like i have more power and privilege than i do so i need to do what i can mm -hmm. yeah yeah well it's very clear that we can have a change and an yep. impact because the eu have just banned single-use plastics uh -huh. people yeah big corporations are switching to circular closing the loop closing the loop <laughs> uh, on packaging mm-hmm it's happening. We it's just got to keep, keep keep going. Keep doing it. Yeah. Don't stop. Yeah. Don't give up because we only have 12 years to go. Ne yeah, never think enough. Because about. we might be able to turn it around if we act fast enough. Mm. So we more of you need to demand more of it. Yeah. To get it done faster. Go team, go. <laughs> go team. <laughs> All right. I think that's about it for yep. us. Do we need to make a little bit more happier note on the end? 
I thought I did pretty well. Okay, you did do well. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm worried if we carry on, you go <laughs> We're dark gonna again. We're going to go dark again. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's all right. It needs to be said. Yeah, it's, it's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, where can people find you, Crystal? You can find me over on the Eco Society, either on Instagram or Facebook or over on our website. How about you, Nicola? People can follow me on Instagram if you want at underscore Nick underscore Nick. And we also have a Facebook group, uh, Eco Me and Eco You. Feel free to join. We're a bit quiet, but we'll probably start posting. We've tried prodding mm. and we haven't got much yeah. response. <laughs> so if more people join, it'll be awesome because we can have more conversations. Yeah. What do you want to hear from us? Yeah, what do you want to hear from us? We also have an email address. Did I say that? No. So we have an email address. It's ecome and ecou at gmail.com. It's all linked below. Should yeah, it's you all linked below. You don't need to write that down. <laughs> yeah. So feel free to contact us. Give us your feedback. If you have any feedback on what we talk about or if you have any insight, please let us know because we're always keen to learn. Yeah, or definitely. Or if you have any suggestions on podcast episodes. Well, if you have any requests on like product reviews, yeah. let us know and we'll make let a list. And then if you really want to, you could rate us five stars on iTunes because it means that more people, it's easier for more people to find us and that would be awesome because it means that we can spread the message more. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. See you. See you. Bye.